Hi all, let's have a look at another spectacularly crushing win of Boris Spassky as described and highlighted by Gary Kasparov in his amazing Great Predecessors Volume 3 book. I was one of those that were in a long queue for this book at the London Chess Centre. It was great, the uh, uh, attended event and there's Malcolm Payne there in the background. Okay, so this game got uh, Boris Spassky into uh, the best game prizes of Informata in three consecutive years. This was one of the three. Uh, so Boris Basket against Jonathan Penrose, 1969, Palma and Mallorca tournament, round 11. So this tournament was one of the strongest held that year. Uh, it had both the new world chess champion, Boris Basket was the new world chess champion, and the ex-world champion Petrosian, both invited. And it was the first time the two had met up after the Petrosian Spassky rematch of 1969. So a great tournament. Uh, well worth checking out the games generally in that. So d4 from Boris Spassky. We have knight f6 by Jonathan Penrose. So c4, g6. We go into a King's Engine defense. Not so popular nowadays. I checked around the tournament. In fact, Spassky with the black pieces was also used in one game, uh, the King's Engine defense as well as things like the Queen's Engine, and even a Shikorin a Shikorin defence in another. It's well worth checking out the games of Spassky in this tournament. Very interesting opening choices. But the King's Engine, quite, you know, really quite popular at the time uh, as a workhorse. D6, F3, C6, Bishop E3, A6. And this plan of playing for B5 is not dissimilar to the similar so far to a game you know, Spassky had with the black pieces in the same tournament with the King's Engine. Same sort of plan. Bishop d3, knight bd7, knight g e2, b5, queen d2, bishop b7. So black at the moment is maintaining a, a nice hypermodern, double hypermodern, <laughs> double fianchettoed bishops uh, at the moment. White castles, black castles, b3, e5 uh, now white closes try and closes the center with d5 we have an interesting situation here now after b4 there is actually here an unprotected piece potential tactical issue to exploit and in fact here Jonathan Penrose he closed the position with c5 this might have a long-term downside this pawn chain uh, can be undermined at b4 and potentially it's a bit fragile later as well it may be so a3 for example and then doubling behind a3 is one immediate issue but it's a, a fixed structure prone to attack and vulnerabilities if the base of the pawn chain can be taken out it's going to be loosen, loosening other parts of the pawn chain it's it's a structure that has to be maintained there is a tactical alternative that exists here which engines bring up c takes and whatever way white takes with the e or, or c pawns there's knight takes d5 and this might have been well worth doing to win this rook uh, but white does get the b4 pawn this position though may be uh, dynamically equal it's more uh, open and tactical and there's yeah it might be a dynamic equality there and the same uh, with you know the other way of taking if it's not taken with um the uh if c takes if taking the other way c takes c takes then the same it makes no difference this e4 mechanism but uh, that was passed up on and so we have kind of a fixed structure for black hair and we have now clamping going on g4 white wants to discourage totally black any notion of black playing f5 so it seems actually a rather at the moment miserable king's engine style position in some respects uh, one could argue king h2 knight f2 uh, knight g8 we have knight g3 so this real reinforcement against any any prospect of f5 totally ruled out so why it's basically creating a free hand on the queen side at the moment queen h4 we do have king g2 a seemingly cautious uh, move h6 a3 now chiseling away at this pawn chain uh, a5, rook a2, so doubling the rooks for a takes b4. Knight d f6, rook f a1, 
and after knight h7 white has this uh, luxury of infiltration now after a takes it's getting very precarious for black here already if c takes then things like c5 look to create a pass pawn it looks very very dangerous positionally to allow c5 so black took with the a pawn and um also the problem the immediate problem with c5 as well is rook takes a5 but even if rook takes a5 didn't exist c5 looks looks quite crushing as well so a takes and now white traded off the rooks and infiltrated now via the a file queen a2 so this queen is actually a real nuisance in in black's position now after queen a7 here driving the black queen back black's getting really passive here bishop e2 but it's a little, a little bit far from clear how white actually breaks black up here is there actually a, a, an easy way of of doing this if you were giving this as a positional planning exercise how would you actually dismantle the black position is the clue in this pawn chain somehow is this pawn chain somehow fragile it doesn't look that bad at the moment uh, we have knight hf6 and in fact here uh, f4 now that does offer a potential concession of opening up potentially this bishop on the diagonal and also you know e5 and d4 could be in theory useful to black so these kind of squares this diagonal opened up and these two key squares is it a bit controversial black did take bishop takes f4 we have knight e8 so this liberates that bishop it can come into the white position potentially which it does after queen b8 we have bishop d4 but white now is sealing up the downside of the e5 square by playing this centralizing move knight d3 and it looks as though in fact there's convergence on this common square if you look at these three pieces they're all converging including the queen for e5 as a potential break uh, black dissuades e5 as a pawn break by playing f6 have bishop f3 so is the position still in a dynamic you know state of equality here or not queen d7 and now h4 trying to win a square basically if h5 to try and provoke g5 then the f5 square might be useful uh, knight uh, sorry king h7 h5 yes the f5 square is now being weakened bishop drops back and here in fact um, we have bishop e5 on knight e7 uh, it's it's just a pleasant position for black uh, sorry for white even if white doesn't play knight f5 here knight e2 for example and bishop e3 and yeah there's good prospects as we'll see in the game similar to the game uh, so bishop e5 was played and maybe judging that knight f5 is, is mostly harmless here we have though bishop e3 and if you look at this move bishop e3 that is what has just been neglected the e3 square it's kind of a weakness of the last move so being pounced on but why centralize the bishop here is it just being pretty to centralize these pieces they look nice in a row and two of them nicely centralized but uh, is there anything concrete going on here we have knight e7 and it looks in some respects well isn't black fine we have the move now a forcing move knight takes e5 f takes uh, e5 otherwise c5 drops and here uh, Boris Basky played an incredible uh, move I wonder if you can spot it if I give you five seconds to pause the video you might it's not just about calculation it's it shows a real integration of you know calculation with positional judgment deep positional judgment uh, which we might get from say you know watching neural network games so a fantastic move uh, here was played okay white did dismantle the pawn chain bishop takes c5 offering a bishop just for two pawns so that has to be taken really queen takes and it's two pawns but it's two center pawns if you look at this which means two connected pass pawns for white in the center and white's pieces are well poised here to support the advance of them furthermore uh, c5 and then subsequently b4 would be weak if that was 
uh, picked off, there'll be even more connected past pawns for white. So it's a really interesting, uh, dynamic, aggressive piece sacrifice. We have the move knight g8. And the queen just goes to b8. So making way for e5 potentially. Knight e f6. Knight f5 first though. That's a really nice entrenched kind of uh, knight here on f5. Knight e7. And the point of, of this knight f5 is now revealed as well. There's a tactical point to this. Uh, I wonder if you can spot it in this position what white plays here another nice move from Boris Baski another brilliant move five seconds to pause the video okay knight takes h6 yes a very very powerful forcing uh, sequence would result if king takes h6 uh, let's have a look at that it wasn't played knight e takes d5 was played but let's have a look at king takes for a moment the forcing check, the best forcing check is actually on the diagonal here, queen f8 check, because uh, queen h8 might might allow things like knight h7. But this one leads to this check, and the knights can't get in the way, and in fact the f6 knight is lost. And here we get a kind of form pawn threatening mate. And if that's the best move for black, this is getting to be hopeless. This is an absolutely hopeless position. So yeah, it's just crushing by force basically on king takes h6 so knight e takes d5 was played we have c takes and now taking so tokenly a piece up but look at this check picking off c5 which would weaken b4 this pawn chain is being chipped again uh, so it's now back to three pawns for a piece but white has this potential connected pass pawns as well as winning b4 for black to contend with. Knight d7. Uh, it looks as though you know if black's given some chances, maybe there's some checks. But it's white's turn and it's check to the black king. And now e5 closing up that diagonal. King h8. If queen takes e5, then that drops the knight. And that's hopeless after queen f7. Uh, black hasn't got any checks or anything and knight takes you know to, to keep a perpetual and if knight takes then that vacation of e4 is used that e4 square parking space is used with h6 this is really just too much for black to handle it's just completely obliteration yeah so uh that is just um yeah h6 here if queen f7 then check and h7 again it's just that pawn's queening as well potentially uh and here, uh, if king h8, then queen b8 check is the most crushing. Uh, so that's just winning a load of material and mating. So yeah, all of these scenarios after e5, it's just it's just not possible to play knight takes e5 because of this check and h6. It's absolutely crushing stuff. Uh, it's great calculation, uh, this kind of thing, uh, because you know once the king moved for example if we look at this line just for a moment again using that square driving the king back you know reveals h6 now as a resource a major resource it's yeah it's all working very well for white so basically uh here king h8 uh, and it's looking pretty helpless for black after h6 we have queen h7 e6 these pawns are really gaining huge strength now an opportunity we have a token check being played queen c2 check if knight f6 the most incisive move by far is queen b8 check uh, this is really awkward for black so if the queen moves in front then queen takes the bishop if knight moves then actually queen e5 check is really embarrassing with that form pawn uh, black would have to give up a piece like that and it's totally hopeless it's actually checkmate there so that's by far uh, the most crushing in fact the position's so strong for white though that even queen f8 check is actually really good after taking here and this is is murderous uh, so even queen f8 check and if knight goes back just taking actually on b4 positionally uh, these pawns are not going anywhere this is just a huge position for white as well there might be some opportunities for counterplay if, if white wasn't so aggressive uh, with king g3. Uh, there might be some tactics like this with some checks 
uh, to watch out for. But even here, you know, White's doing really quite well. But it, it's such a crushing position. There's really no meaningful defensive resource. So Queen C2 check was chosen. And after King G3, in fact, Black resigns here. It's really quite helpless. Uh, if we look at this, if Knight F6, then check, and then Queen G7 is checkmate. That form pawn is very, very dangerous. If Queen G6, it's just Queen takes D7 and E7, that's pawns crashing through. If Queen C5, just taking and the pawns are just crashing through again. E7 is crashing through. Queen D2, just for the record, just taking there. Yeah, it's these pawns, these checks rather, are just running out here. Uh, so here, check and then mate. Yeah, so absolutely stunning, crushing game. That peace sacrifice for the central pawn mobility was really quite instructive and profound, actually. Bishop takes c5, a really shocking uh, move with huge positional implications. So Boris Basky cracking the black pawn structure there. Fantastic uh, game. So, um, yeah, this is one of the uh, many excellent uh, game references you'll find if you check out this um, online course from Chessable. Kasparov's great predecessors, you can find that on King's Crusher TV slash uh, Kasparov. A lot of the fantastic achievements of uh, both Boris Basky and Tigran Petrosian are highlighted. And uh, this is one of an interesting set of three which uh, got these informative prizes from Boris Basky. I hope you enjoyed it as much as me. Okay, thanks very much.